Okay, I want to say hi again everybody. Hello, it's only me Wushu Richard and in this video I'm going to do something special. Uh, in this video I'm going to read something. Now I don't always like to read stuff or um, I mean on camera and uh, or share, you know, um, I mean I love to share other people's stuff and what they do and spread them. Um, the good word wherever it comes from you know uh, good information but um, I always like to be I always like prefer to be fresh and creative you know by myself and share my opinions on things you know it's, it's my channel right it's a it's a window into my life every time you see me on camera talking right and, and what I believe in and what my values are on certain things but, um, you know, uh, every now and again, every now and then, sometimes I will read something that someone else has put and share other people's thoughts because um, it's, just, it's just, just good to get a good message out there, wherever it comes from, right? So I want to say thank you for watching um, any of my videos. and um, I, I make a lot of philosophy talk videos and stuff, as you know. I always make a lot of videos, a lot of videos um, on different topics myself. And I want to say um, thanks everybody for watching, okay? In today's uh, video here though, now I'm going to um, read a passage, okay, um, or no, a, an article. And it's a, it's a martial arts article that was written, um, co-written basically. Um, it was a cooperative article. It was written, uh, please excuse me for my expression here. I mean, it was like, um, it was, a, it was a written by two people who came together and they wrote this martial arts article. Now, bear in mind, um, I don't know what my opinions are going to be on it. I don't know what my opinions will be, but I will not be um, in any way, you know, negative. Negative, um, you know, in my um, in my result. Okay, um, I'm I'm going to read the article now for the first time, but I have faith in it because these are two positive people and. One of the people I know very well um, is a has always been a close friend of mine, and his name <coughs> his name is uh, Dwayne Jean Emsley, and Dwayne Jean Emsley uh, is also known as Demsley, and we both come from the UK. Uh, he comes from Birmingham, I come from London, different different parts, but we're both from the UK, and uh, we're both martial artists, and we we both like to write. He's actually an author. And you can pick up wonderful books that Dwayne Jean Emsley has written. Okay, I have been lucky enough to have them and read them, okay? Uh, but books such as Kickboxing in Paradise, which is a book um, which you can get on Amazon and you can also get it on um, Lulu, I do believe. .com. And it's a, a book about of short stories, okay? Um, Kickboxing in Parado Paradise. And it's mostly like um, positive like fiction Okay, some of the stuff's martial arts related. <clears throat> a lot of it's martial arts related. And then he's got um, another um, book also of short horror stories. And it's like, it's okay for you if you've got like an open mind. It's like humorous, but it's like for adults really more so. But it's, it's called um, Dark, Twisted and Something Stupid. You can check that out too. And uh, Yeah, as I said, but uh, recently, just recently, like uh, fairly recently, um, he's uh, released another book. And I, but I believe he has another book on the way too. But uh, Dwayne Jean Emsley has actually um, published a book on Amazon, I do believe, too, called Still Waters, and it's a philosophy type book based on his own philosophical thought, thoughts on life. And um, it's very good um, points on these. He's had quite a few people buy the book too, and uh, it's, it's must be popular. He's doing, he's doing, you know. I mean, you know. He's doing better than some people are, right? He's being creative, he's expressing himself, and he's getting people, you know, um, there's, he's had some people buy his books. So I advise you, anybody out there, if you've got an open mind, you know, if you've got something to share, and you have a passion and a creative passion, you know, like I do, always put focus into that and try to get your stuff out there. It's not about showing off, but you could get someone's attention there are like-minded people out there you know anyway enough about the advertisements let's get on with this whole video which is um in in a way you could say it's an advertisement also but i'm just sharing i'm looking into things here and 
This is, this is a, it looks positive stuff. It's a martial arts article, okay? So there was an article, okay, this martial arts article written by Dwayne Jean Emsley. It was his idea. And he got in contact with another person called, uh, I believe her name is Andrea Harkins. Andrea Harkins. And let me just check on that name to make sure I'm absolutely right. Yeah, Andrea Harkins. So I don't know her. But she's an author and a motivator and a martial artist at The Martial Arts Woman. You can check that out online, The Martial Arts Woman, Andrea Harkins. Uh, I'll just read the background on her. This is uh, new for me too here. Andrea Harkins, a.k.a. The Martial Arts Woman, is a martial artist and an author of two motivational books about life and martial arts. The Martial Arts Woman and Martial Arts Inspirations for Everyone. Uh, she is writing her third book, How to Start Your Own Martial Art Program. Andrea also writes for numerous martial art magazines internationally, including Martial Art Illustrated UK. Now, Martial Arts Illustrated, which is actually, um, which is, um, it's always been like, um, it was founded, founded by Bob Sykes, I do believe. Um, uh, Dwayne Jean Emsley has also written uh, many articles for them on martial arts training too. I just wanted to say that there, okay? Um, the Martial Art uh, Guardian UK and Martial Art Business uh, Australia. So these are various um, uh, magazines that this Andrea Harkins writes for, okay? Um, she also writes for the Parish Village News and her blog, www.themartialartswoman.com. Uh, uh, the Andrea's mission is to take... Uh, to make the world a better place through martial arts and positivity. So that's great, right? That's that's what I'm all about, anyway, too, right? And Dwayne G. Nemsley and anybody who's, you know, who loves the martial arts, like friends of mine, you know who you are online. So I don't I don't know this person, but I do know Dwayne G. Nemsley, and and they've together written this um, article. And I will try to leave the link if it allows me. I'll try to leave the link in the description. Okay to this video here so check the description and I'll leave uh, the link to this uh, this um, article which I'm about to read now okay and there's a couple of photos there of the two warriors okay too so let's uh, check it out okay oh plus if anybody wants to know about my um, writings okay be it book, books or blogs or anything I do just uh, let me know, okay? And I, I will be I will be sharing links and stuff to my stuff anyway. Now, um, now let's look at this. Um, okay, so let's begin. The, t the we're going to begin right now, okay? The topic, uh, the title of this, uh, the title of this joint written written article by Dwayne Jean Emsley and uh, Andrea Harkins is. Is there a place for arrogance in martial arts, okay? Is there a place for arrogance in martial arts? Now, if you ask me straight away, I've got opinions. I will say no way. There's no way, there's no place for arrogance in anywhere in life, okay? I would say that. If you ask me, that's what I would say. Um, and it says again, ego, you know, same for ego. But um, I think ego and arrogance are a little tiny tad bit a little bit different um you may have an ego like you may love yourself or you may you may come across you you may be full of ego you know like you or you fill yourself with a proud type of feeling that where you're like today i don't give a damn you know I'm, I'm i can take on anything you know like that kind of thing and that may be in some situations good so that kind of like it's not always bad, so I can see where this topic, why they've brought this topic into, um, you know, <clears throat> it's something to talk about, right? Because we always talk about being humble and stuff, and yes, that's right, we should be. Ego is for idiots at the end of the day. Uh, you shouldn't be arrogant, and you shouldn't be ignorant either, but that's what I'm saying. With um, arrogance, though, I see arrogance as like a negative expression of ego, like how to being arrogant, being ignorant. Uh, being rude in some way or impolite to others, like you know, just shunning people, shunning or shoving them all away, sort of thing, you know. Um, and uh, that that's that's no good in my opinion. That's yeah, really no good. 
to be do, to be doing that, you know, pushing people away and putting people down and crapping on the world around you. But anyway, that's the title, okay? Is there a place for arrogance in the martial arts? Okay, let's begin and we'll 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 read this part for part, okay? A quiet ego with a confident flair. July eleven uh, the eleventh, uh, two thousand and eighteen. Andrea Harkins commentary. Okay. Arrogance and its role in the mar in martial arts. Today I have the privilege of sharing a few thoughts with fellow martial artist and author Dwayne Emsley. Okay. Uh, Dwayne, who's from the, from the UK, this is what um, Andrea Harkins has said, and I have been friends on Facebook for quite a while, and he recently approached me with a fascinating idea. Dwayne said, I have an idea to share with you. How would you like to write a joint article about martial arts? It can be about anything. Your choice. You can start it off and I continue. And we share the finished piece. I'm excited to see what our minds come up with or could come up with. My immediate response was yes. In a world where negativity prevails, bringing two like minds together is a blessing. And I too was excited to see where we could go with this back and forth banter. Go, go back, sorry, go, where we could go with this back and forth banter. What I learned is that together people can grow with each other, I, with each other. I picked a difficult topic and somehow in the end it all came together. The topic of arrogance is not an easy one and I hope you will enjoy what Dwayne and I discovered about it in our writing session. Okay, this is Andrea. And Andrea first says, Arrogance is made up of conceit, conceit pride, self-importance, and egotism. Even using the word arrogance in the same sentence that includes the words martial arts might make you cringe. Martial arts are often called fighting arts, but when we look more closely, there are more of a defensive but they are more of a defensive system than a fighting system. Some martial arts training requires a lot of internal reflection. The way of the peaceful warrior is a common topic explored when people delve into martial arts. Not every student wants to fight. Some want to understand themselves better and uh, themselves better. And that is a purposeful and prudent self-reflection. In this regard, there is no place for arrogance in martial arts. How can you be peaceful or defensive and arrogant at the same time? Shouldn't the martial arts be humble, serve others and use martial arts? Uh, sorry, shouldn't the martial artist be humble, serve others and use martial arts for, for a greater purpose? The answer to these questions are yes, yes, and yes. Okay. okay, is there a place for arrogance in martial arts, or are there moments when pride and self-importance and egotism could be necessary? The real question is to what extent does arrogance make sense, if ever? Arrogance in the real world. Okay, and the next part is also a uh, uh, by Andrea here with the uh, question. Uh, the question is, um, please excuse me. Um, I've just I've just finished my lunch. I, I stopped the video in the middle, and I just went to have my lunch. Okay, so bear with me. It was okay. It was a quick lunch, but let's get back to the topic. Okay, yeah. So Andrea's questions here. So um, she says, well, um. Uh, could arrogance have a place in martial arts, or is it confidence? There can be a fine line between the two. I agree. Um, in all, it, it depends on the situation, but in all practicality, some level of arrogance might be revealed. Okay. Um, I am no expert in combat. But could arrogance ever come into play? Several have commented on this topic that arrogance is a false sense of who you are and can actually put yourself in more danger. You should always consider that your opponent is better than you and fight smartly. 
should you practice arrogance in martial art training? Uh, uh, and uh, Andrea said, uh, oh, I want to say, please excuse me, okay, please excuse me here. Uh, I'm, it's not too clear who's asking the questions. Um, it, I don't know if it's um, Dwayne or Andrea asking these questions here. That's that's my problem, okay, but please excuse me. We're, we're just looking at these topics, though, okay, so I, I respect you both for doing this. <coughs> okay, so Andrea says, there really is no way to train for arrogance of any kind in martial arts. It is the opposite of everything uh, for which any martial artist typically trains. There are not many times when you will have the opportunity to be arrogant or get away with it. To understand arrogance, you need to understand its opposite, humility. If you are humble, you are on the on so you are on one end of the spectrum. Arrogance is way on the other side. Arrogance is like every other opposite, or like uh, yin and yang, okay, yin yang, and uh, it exists in all of us and can be called to duty at any times in our lives. But is that ever the right thing? How much more do you appreciate the sunshine after days of rain, or how much more do you love someone after being apart? Uh, and if something is out of reach, how much more do you want it? Keep arrogance uh, at a safe distance in everyday life in your martial art practice. Okay, so <laughs> it's basically like back and forth, like philosophical. Please excuse excuse me for using your quotes, but back and forth banter, right? <laughs> back and forth, back and forth, philosophical banter. You know, it's like, oh, you you know. You can say anything. Sorry for interject, interjecting here, but you can say it about anything. You know, but like the rain, you know, you expect, you appreciate the rain after after days and days of sunshine, or the other way around, you know, or like um, when you don't have food or drink and you're hungry, you want it more, and all this kind of stuff. It's philosophical, but we're talking about arrogance here. We're talking about something, you know. I guess what they're trying to say is there's a time and a place for you to for to justify in some kind of way some arrogance or ego. I'm just taking it on my point of view here. Not too sure about who's asking some of these questions. I think it's Dwayne asking Andrea. But anyway, okay, but then the last final point he said on that part was uh, keep arrogance at a safe distance in everyday life and in your martial art practice. Okay, ego is a part of us. Okay, ego is a part of us. Now, um, I'm not too sure about that. It seems like all of that stuff, the above, what I just read was mostly, or if not all, written by Andrea Harkins. And I think that was, she's got some very good points there. <coughs> now, Dwayne is going to speak, okay? Dwayne's going to speak now. Dwayne says, okay, Dwayne Jean Emsley says, Demsley, in a, he says, because he's an honest person and he's very righteous also. Uh, in, in his daily life, uh, as well as the martial arts. But continuing from Andrea's previous piece, this topic leads to some thought-provoking searching. Ego is part of our human makeup. It, we it wears many hats and is stronger with different personalities. Uh, you could go really deep here, but for the nature of martial artists suffering from ego or struggling to tap into it it can boil down to your confidence as a person being a man not that this matters i have trained uh, around other men with ego the worst kinds are the ones where uh, who use it as a power and in return damage uh, so damage the martial arts essence a martial art to me is an amazing voyage of excitement and discovery discovery uh, similar to the journey in the 80s movie, here we go, Flight of the Navigator. I love the way Dwayne always has to mention a movie, you know, just like Rocky, just like this. Because, yeah, we, we've been inspired by so many movies and, and TV shows and stuff, but it, it's just funny. Okay, so we'll, we're talking about that, and now, just like the 80s movie, Flight of the Navigator. If you've ever seen it, it's like an alien sci-fi thing with a a robotic spaceship flying around with a little kid in it 
kind of like, a, I don't know. I mean, you've got to remember back then they had E.T. E and a lot of things like that. Let's get back to the topic, though, what we're talking about here, can martial arts and arrogance. It should be fascinating enough to pull the curiosity from any shy cat that prowls from the shadows of uncertainty. See, again, very poetic. You see, this is one of um, Dwayne's, um, I find, one of Dwayne's most... Uh, I think Dwayne really loves to be a writer. I think our styles are a little bit different. Dwayne likes to be sometimes realistic, but then sometimes he likes to be poetic too. Whereas me, I can go very deep and sometimes sometimes uh, overcomplicated, sometimes myself sometimes, but I get very deep when I'm expressing myself philosophically or when I'm doing my writing or making philosophy videos. But... Um, what with me, I find some people like that when when you have this some um, poetic type stuff, but sometimes I find it can be distracting now, and you have to deal with it, delve into things, and it can be a good thing. So Demsley has said here, um, curiosity from any shy cat that prowls from the shadows of uncertainty. It means you know poetic writing like that straight away, you're going to get people's attention just by that. Wow, it just sounds great, right? But have you, as a reader or listener, would you have you ever looked into a certain thing? Because you know it's you know what I mean. I mean it's the same as me. I could look at a piece of artwork, or anyone could like read something, and you can say it's good artwork, you know, or it's a well it's a well made movie or a piece of artwork, or it's very good writing, very poetic, very written beautifully. But what about the meaning inside? Um, or what do you take from it? This is the thing. So sometimes you may say you've read a whole book, but if you take one quote or one thing, what can you take from it? It's the same as what can you take and what can you make from one martial arts technique, okay? Not just the whole style, you know. Okay. So the deepness within the simple. <laughs> but, you know... Let's just continue though. Um, so that's so there. Okay, so Dems Demsley's referring to the life journey and it being just like the movie Flight of the Navigator and also about being a, what's it, a pu pulling curiosity from any shy cat that prowls from the shadows of uncertainty. Okay, so whatever you take from that, you will. Okay, I'll have to think about that. I could sit here for half an hour thinking about that, but anyway. Growing up, I had many hardships, and thankfully, through the discovery of martial arts and writing, I was able to strengthen and focus, uh, strengthen a focus. This laser beam focus uh, came that became my superpower. But just like Superman three, <laughs> doing it again, Superman. Th but just like Superman three, it must be the greater for the greater good. If not, then ego will find you and burn you out. Oh yeah, just like that Stephen King film, It. Or, or no, just like Supergirl. Oh no, just like Freddy Krueger. Oh no, just like Robocop. I mean, ah, the list goes on. We, we, we inspire ourselves with all of this uh, wonderful creativity. Now, in Superman 3, uh, don't forget Gremlins too. If not, then ego will find you and burn you out. Like a giant spider in a cobweb. Have you been hiding in the shadows? It is all about knowing yourself emotionally. Self-awareness helps you to distinguish what triggers you positively or negatively. I believe novice or expert martial artists of any style can improve along the same scale. To me, we are <coughs> one family with a cause to fulfil in ourselves and our lovely families. We choose to train, choose to improve, and now we must carry the, that eternal flame for as long as we can. We get to teach, ed, uh, teach, educate, and share parts of ourselves with the world in the hope that our energy is enough to ignite, inspire, guide, and help others who are not there yet. Just like Superman 4. Only joke, I'm just joking. But it's very, very true. The various types of arrogant people, and now Dwayne is going to talk about that, okay? The various types of ignorant people, the arrogant people. Same thing if you ask me, but... 
Just as we first struggled with direction and then we somehow just knew, others need, uh, others need others to be as others. Again, again. Others need others to be as others. And to create more others from another's mother. So let me say that again, right? You can put, you can do some, give me a beatbox or do some hip hop beats, rap, rap beats if you like to this while I say this. Okay, just, okay. Just as we struggled with direction and then, I said, because just as we first struggled in direction and then we somehow just knew others need others to be as others and create more others from another's mother. Phew, that was a mouthful. <laughs> That's a very long sentence. Others need others to be as others and to create more others from another's mother. Motherfucker, I don't even know where I'm going with that. <laughs> it's like, others in... And then what's the other side of that? <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> and what did, it, what, what did you mean when you said others? What was that relating, referring to? That's deep too. And it would be different from somebody else too, from another point of view, because... Someone, some other person in the mirror, like Michael Jackson, but just like that song from Michael Jackson. Anyway, <laughs> the bog of eternal stench. Okay, yeah, so here we go. There, there are arrogant people who know they are arrogant, but don't care. Then there are arrogant people who do not know they are arrogant. And finally, there are people who are insecure but cover it up and, as a result, come across as arrogant when, in fact, they have a certain type of ego that worries what people think about them. So they adopt to cover of the wolf. So uh, adopt the cover of the wolf. In addition to these types of ego, competitiveness has the ability to breed ego. I agree with that, especially. Um, there, There is nothing worse than the black belt, doesn't exist, who has arrived at a higher level only to attain, entertain, so, uh, entrain himself, entrain himself in the ex, at the expense of lower grade, lower grade students. This brings us to know, so this brings us to what we know as controlled aggression. I didn't understand the part before that, but kind of get it. <coughs> See, sometimes you need to read things over again, you know, to get it. <coughs> you can find it, find this online, guys, if you don't, don't understand anything, or I'll, I'll put the link in the description, or you can come back and watch this video again. Because some of this stuff needs to be thought about if you've got time. It is possible for a martial artist, regardless of rank, to learn how to dig back in with the heels and tweak some internal sinews. It's a word I've not actually used before, so I don't know that. Um, uh, in order to be a good writer, you must be a good reader first. I'm, I'm just introduced. I'm, I just said that myself. I'm just, just saying the the key the key with this is not to strengthen not the strength of your ego but the strength of your leash on your ego or the grip on the leash on the on the ego what does it represent all will depend on your nature as a person on the street or in fact anywhere we see many angry people out of balance for different reasons uh, how can we deal with all these personalities, emotions, and actions at present uh, that, so that present so that present threatening ego? Do you mean present a threatening ego, or present threatening ego? I guess you mean present a threatening ego, or seem to be present uh, seemingly threatening ego. Uh, such. By the way, um, please excuse me for the speed that I'm reading here. I'm also busy. I'm reading this pretty quickly, okay? You may need more time to read through this when you read it. And I also want to say, please excuse me for the way I'm stressing certain words or lacking stressing certain words or parts of sentences. Because sometimes when someone's trying to express something in words when they're speaking, 
they may speak a certain way and express and stress certain parts whereas with me i may be just reading through you know um, certain things here well you know just quite blandly okay the but because it carries a different meaning when you do that in some ways um the the average fair-minded person will weigh the effects of such an encounter such as getting hurt going to court or jail or long-term psychological damage the mental turmoil could be just as bad if you become a victim the next question is how does the gentle side of martial arts uh, the health benefits and philosophy fit into the picture again these questions okay as they're put throughout this whole um this whole um, article I don't know who's asking, is it Dwayne asking her or her asking Dwayne or are they both looking at it? I don't know. Uh, sorry, um, that's uh, Andrea. Anyway, Dwayne said, as martial artists, we love to adhere to the gentle side of the arts, the health benefits and philosophy, don't we? I know I love it all. Uh, I know I love it all. Nature and symbols. It's great. I have seen firsthand that sometimes aggression is needed to face aggression. I'm not saying this is noble, but I'm, I firmly support the need to give birth to a new kind of ego, a pretend one that can be controlled at will, like your other techniques, a pretend kind of ego. That, uh, imagine uh, that, a new modified dinosaur that is not in a movie. Sometimes it is not what you can do, but what you can say. We train for in, we train we train for counters in physical defence. So why not allow a quiet ego to give off a confident flair when necessary? Now Andrea speaks. Andrea says, Dwayne and I agree that ego is a piece of who each of us are. Like anything, it can be used for good or bad intentionally or unintentionally by martial artists and by non-martial artists let us not pretend to be mightier than others when it comes to arrogance because it will make itself known in all of our lifetimes the good news is that arrogance can be controlled while it can swell swell to a roar if we let it in most instances as Dwayne stated it can be a quiet ego with a confident flair uh, uh, in martial arts, we must all, we must always temper arrogance, ego, and uh, self indulgence with a much bigger picture of helping others. If we focus on others and not ourselves, arrogance rarely reveals its ugly head. Um, okay, um, its ugly head. Uh, please, please excuse me here. Okay, right now. In, in, that, in that mode and train of thought, it will quietly maintain, but it, it will always be on guard, or be guarded against, I guess not guarded, or on guard, but guarded against, I would, I would think, but uh, maybe you do mean always on guard, okay, Andrea, sorry there, so it will always be on guard, hmm. not too clear about that, what you meant by that, but what do you think about the place of arrogance in martial arts? Okay, so the question, yeah, what do you think about the place of arrogance in martial arts? Please let us know in the comments section below. By uh, Dwayne G. Nemsley and Andrea Harkins, okay. Um, so I want to say, yeah, it says here, editor's note, for other articles dealing with ego in the martial arts, check out um, Thermodynamics, uh, Ego and Confidence in the Martial Arts by Ron Amram or Ego in the Martial Arts by Daniel Hartz. Okay, so, um, okay, it says here also, okay, um, Dwayne Emsley, okay, more information on Dwayne Emsley, okay, is a martial artist and holds a diploma in short story writing. He has written articles for, for Martial Arts Illustrated magazine and was awarded Top Fighter Award at the MAI Hall of Fame, that's Martial Arts Illustrated Hall of Fame. He is also the author of Kickboxing in Paradise and Still Waters and Dark Twisted and Something Stupid. So check that out, okay? It's a horror, a comedy slash ho horror slash comedy book. 
available on Amazon and Lulu. And you can see the nice photos there. Uh, Dwayne G. Nemsey with the nunchucks and uh, Andrea Hartz. Uh, sorry, no, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, and uh, hold on one second. Let me get that name right. Uh, Andrea Harkins there. We've got two photos of her there also in good uh, poses. Okay, so um, that's basically that now. Um, yeah, okay, so if anybody wants to check those guys, those out, okay, yeah, do go and check them out. Thank you for watching this video. It's nearly 36 minutes. I'll just finish with a few words on that then. Um, and I want to say um, thank you, both of you, for writing such a wonderful article. I found it very fascinating. And thank you for anybody who watches my videos. Okay, but um, what I'm going to do is, okay, I'm not going to leave my comment in the comment section here. What do I think about arrogance? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that question, okay, because uh, it was asked by the two of them. They actually asked, uh, you know, what do you think about the place of arrogance in martial arts? I'm not asking you guys that. Okay, I don't. I don't care because whatever you say, I don't. I don't uh, me, I've got my personal take on it. My my answer to that would be: there's no place for arrogance at all. There's no place for arrogance. Um, you know, it just, there is an arrogance to me. Is how we interpret the word. So, what I call it is. I wouldn't even call it justified expression of emotion or justified, even if it's fake or pretend, I still wouldn't call it justified if you're trying to do it righteously and just, justly, like for the, for the, like, for example, um, fighting is wrong, right? But for the greater cause, you know, or even standing up and in, in word, in speech for the greater cause. So you may have to, like they say, cut off the hand to save the arm or whatever, you know, not, it's a figure of speech, this is a figure of speech, I'm just saying, you know, you do something that may be a little bit wrong, you know, I mean, it's like saying you can't take one step back to take two steps forward, or, or can you, you know what I'm trying to say though, it's like, you do something wrong, slightly wrong, but like, for the greater good, we understand that, like the same in martial arts fighting or whatever, okay, you punch someone and hurt him badly, okay, to prevent him killing himself or killing everybody or you know you, you you've saved everybody or to save your life you know or worse you know that yeah you may hurt someone's feelings you may break someone's hopes you may break someone's uh, you may break up a friendship or relationship with you and somebody else but you may have to sacrifice that it's making sacrifice it's it's about making sacrifices i see it as so What's wrong or right morality and all that? We can talk back and forth all day about just, justice. People have got different viewpoints. But I would not say, as I say, the thing is, I wouldn't really put it that way, like it's justly, in a just way, um, expressing, you know, cause it, um, you know what I mean? Uh, because it's, 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 it's not, you know, you're expressing yourself. What I would say is it would be more like my my interpretation of this would be a just way or a righteous way of you know of making sacrifices like i just said for for that you know making a sacrifice for a just cause basically that's what it basically is making a sacrifice for a just cause or making a sacrifice um just justly it's like just action that's it Shut the fuck up. <laughs> just action. <laughs> just action, basically. Like, not you're not saying that your action is... So you say it's like... it's not, Nothing's going to be going to be perfect, right? So you punch some guy in the face. and you, how, how are you going to call that a just action? It's not. But it's like it was all you could do at that moment. You, within your limitations. To stop the worst thing from happening. So we're never going to be perfect. But we're always trying to prevent worse from happening. So it's a just cause and your heart is right the drive behind it and stuff even if you're an idiot you've still got your you know your right heart as such so basically here though you know talking about arrogance the word arrogance i wouldn't like to use the word myself i wouldn't call it i would say i would definitely say there's no place for arrogance because you can look at it another way ignorance you know it's, there's no place for ignorance if you're arrogant outwardly to the world that means you're just, it's, it's wrong it's negative that's like saying what do you think about, think about the category, you know, negativity, ignorance, rudeness, or violence even. 
So then, okay, maybe I'm going to see. Like I just said to you, it might be okay to to strike, but it's not violent. You see what I'm trying to say? It's like, there's no place for evil, I'll put it that way. It might sound weird. On whatever level, on the smallest level to the biggest level, there's no place for evil is what I'm saying. Because evil and hate and anger and, and like anger, like hate, you know, comes from fear and confusion, a place of darkness. Just like Master Poe said in in the old TV series with Kung Fu, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, fear is the only darkness, you know. You fear something, you feel so emotional about it. This is what I've always had this uh, thing about, you know, when Bruce Lee, when Bruce Lee did say before, when he says, you know, honest self-expression. Fair enough, it, and it's difficult to do. Yeah, but what is the need? We have the need to, we feel like, to communicate with other human beings in whatever way we do. But what is this need to express? Why do people need to express themselves? It means put a message out there. What's your message conveying? Are you screaming out for help? Are you screaming for a babysitting like you're not confident in yourself? You can't survive without people agreeing with your opinion or what you say this is where the ego comes in ego comes from fear arrogance comes from fear so is there any place for fear in the martial arts no it should not be fear of what now but you said we all get afraid sometimes maybe i'm the only one in the room who's going to uh, admit in a lot of in a lot of situations but but i'm not talking about fear you see we're not if you talk about fear outside of yourself it don't exist all the fear all the emo any emotions you feel inside yourself. You can't feel it outside yourself. But what is the connection to the things outside? If, you, if you're afraid of lava coming down from a volcano and you can't run away in time, of course you're going to be afraid. That's very normal. But if you're afraid of your own abilities, it's ridiculous. You just develop that and train over time. So it's all within the self. Arrogance towards others or how you treat others even or how you see them all. We're not even saying necessarily getting into a fight, but even just speaking to others and carrying an arrogant, trying to send waves of your emotions out as though you're a radio speaker. There's no need for you to waste any energy in the martial arts. That's what it should. So this here arrogance is like anything. That's like a using your emotion. It's like you're going to cook food in a microwave and then you're going to chuck it out. Why would you build up such a negative feeling anyway? Calm that down. Simmer that. Water, put water on the fire. You know, if you need to. You know what I mean. You need to drive like a fire. Drive. But if you if something's burning you up inside, don't burn your house down as well. You know, if you're in such a temper, you better get the hell out of the kitchen before something bad happens. You know what I'm trying to say. If you can't, if you're gonna, your emotion gets so built up in you. You know, you gotta calm yourself down inside first. Because arrogance, putting arrogance out, is like anything, putting anything out. You could be doing good, you could be doing good or bad, but you're putting out, in martial arts we should not waste energy, regardless of how big and strong you are, or phys mentally or physically, but it's like, or not, you know, whatever. But it's like, you don't waste energy, you store energy. And you are a life force of, of life, you're just living here. Martial arts is basically how we move our body in the basic terms. You're standing here, or someone's on a bus, you just punch them in the face. Anybody can strike anybody. It's not rocket science, right? <laughs> Someone puts their hands on you, you can elbow, whatever it is. It's like, you know, that's the way you fight, it's the way you fight. The way you exercise and work out, or the diet you eat every day, is how you take care of your body. That's what we're talking about. You can get lost in poetry, philosophy, you can be a beautiful writer, artist, whatever. And we can take any words or emotions and try to talk about them as though they're a thing. How people treat you, how do you feel, or what do you do that offends others, or all this stuff. And you can go so complicated, you, you're mixed up inside. If you clear yourself out inside, you'll be calm. How much energy do you waste trying to express yourself, honestly or not? If you want to take Bruce Lee's words, you know, this is the thing here. So arrogance is not something, are you talking about arrogance within yourself? Is there a place for that? If there's not a place for it inside of you, if the, for the expression of the emotion within inside of you, then what place is there outside of the world, even though everybody's different? You don't need to express everything all the time. 
It's like the artist who draws a wonderful big, paints a beautiful big mural on a wall, so big, and he loves it. It could be big or small, or in paper, an artist, and he does the work, he or she does the work, for everybody to see. But nobody likes it, and he feels hurt by that, you know, but he likes it. Anyway, I'm going to stop this video and say thank you very much for watching, okay? And thanks for listening to my ramble. That's my take on it, though. But I definitely do agree with the part here, what Dwayne was saying also, and Andrea. Some of the points they said about being humble, and, and some of the points they said about having a backup, like um, a little bit of ego inside of us, what we sometimes have, and like having that pretend version. Sometimes when you feel nervous, but if you can tap into that, another energy like a spare you almost like pull out it's like you've got another version of you that you pull out of bed <laughs> that you pull out um every time you need a bit of confidence and you kind of like you may act a bit if in the ego or well put on like act as though you are more confident and brave and then it's like acting you know sometimes you may do that in certain situations i agree and you may prevail there's a lot there's there's a lot of actors in the world, but there are so many gullible people too, but there are also a lot of fake people everywhere everywhere, and that means a lot of delude deluded people too clean your mind out to clean your world out. Does that make any sense? Thank you for watching okay thanks.